Forgive Fáil Tarnáis. All around the world, the Big Mara people have been celebrating their Irish roots. And the last time our next guest was on, we were encouraging everyone at home to, you know, to kind of do a bit of research yeah. on their family history. Absolutely. And we're delighted to welcome him back, of course, uh, to build on that advice he gave us last time. Shane Lahan is with us. Shane, it's brilliant, really, to have you back again. I know you've been trawling a bit into our backgrounds a little. Yes, and I have. And I, I had the plan that I would do both of you today. Yeah. But, you know, that is proud or troublesome, to be honest. <laughs> you know, yeah. Surprise! Yeah. Every time I looked up the O'Shea's, it was put in stills, there was all sorts of things going on. So, do you know what I'm going to do? It's ladies first. And, you okay. know, Maura, if it's okay with you, what we might do for everyone is we might slow the whole thing down because yeah. the last time we whizzed through yeah. everything. And I wanted to talk about the kind of the how, the what, and the where. How you would do this, where where you would look, start, and, yeah. and what kind of material is available for you. So, I asked you, more the last time I said, do you know, do you know the names of your grandparents? And I think that's something we should all start with to begin with. And thankfully your mum, Bridget, is yeah, still alive. Yes. And she was able to give you sort, sort of more detail and so on. So your mum is in her 80s. Yeah. And I was working out there for, so this is 2021. Uh, so probably, probably married, her parents probably married sometime before uh, 1940. Okay, so going back 80 years. And um, so I looked up, and this is the first point, port of call, irishgenealogy.ie. Okay, and and anyone able, can go on there, Shane. Anyone can go on. Onto this both civil records and church records. Before we had to go up into Dublin, you had to queue up, you had to get a docket. It was now it's all online. It's fantastic. And funnily enough, there I found them. So here we have uh, both Stephen Keneally and Mary Keneally, both of lots of Keneallys on the island. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that's where you can go wrong here as well. Just to say to you, in in down in Kerry, you have the O'Shea's. Yeah. You have you know the the the, the Durans, you have the Keneallys, the Fahertas. It's very difficult to work out who's who. Yes, so the more information. Yeah you can get day one the better because if you go down say one wrong road chain you could end up in a totally different place altogether. Different family yeah altogether. that's it i spend my life going down rock roads you know or as my students call them rabbit holes and you're off but listen i was delighted to find this because the marriage certificate gives us so much information mm -hmm. on this one which is interesting stephen Keneally is 38 and Mary is 21 and a half. So these are Maura's grandparents. These are, these yeah, are on mom's side. On, yeah. mom's side. Yeah. on, on your mum's side. So, and, and not only that, there's a big age gap there. Yeah. It's nearly twice yeah. or eight. It's probably like, that, um, not so unusual, no. though, with men and women back then. Yeah. There was a big gap. Absolutely. And, I, and, and what I found today, which was interesting, we have their ages, okay? Yeah. And be having their ages will give us a number of things, and I'll show you that in a second. The other is, we also have the names of their fathers. Now, sadly, they don't record the names of the mothers, but we know that Stephen Keneally's father was Patrick Keneally, and we know that Mary Keneally's uh, father was Pat Keneally, okay? So, God, the confusion again! <laughs> <laughs> Only on an island! And you see, what happens is sometimes when you're looking up then, the next point is that you can then go to the census. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that you look up Pat, Pat, P-A-T, P-A-T-T, sometimes it's in, and Patrick, P-A-T-R-I-C-K. So all of those have to be searched. But we now know what age, so if he was 38 in June 1933, we now know what age he uh, he will be back in the census mm -hmm. because he was born, uh, doing my maths, 1895. So in 1901, he was going to be six years of age. And in 1911, he's going to be okay. 16 so, years of so age. So by checking those two, you know that you're talking about the right person. Exactly. That's yeah. where you need to go. Now, yeah. age is a funny one. If you look what happens here. In the 1911 census, I can find him, right, which is great. But the age is a little bit different. He's 18. So he's there, thereabouts, okay? People weren't really conscious of what age they were at all. They just put down were. kind of what they felt or what they thought or what they remember. <laughs> well, I'd like to go there. <laughs> and there's an even funnier one because in I think it was 1907 did they introduce the old age pension for everyone over 70 years of age. Uh, so everyone so was over 70. So, 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 <laughs> between 1901, the O'Shea's were famous for it. Between 1901 and 1911, they all got they all aged about 10 or 15 that years, you know. Is so funny. <laughs> But, so people weren't so conscious of age. What's great about this, on the 19, 1911 census then, we can actually see Stephen Keneally and we can see his father, Patrick. Yeah. And that's really great. And we can see that he's a widower at that point. So we don't yet have Stephen's... So he's mother. my great-grandfather. He's your great-grandfather. But you know that your, your great-grandmother is dead at this point. Yeah. On the census of 1911, it also tells us what, how many years he was married. He was married 27 years. So from that, we can calculate the eight, the time of marriage. And it also says how many children were born. He's marked down here that 
there was 11 children born into that sort of uh, marriage. So what's really interesting about that is that we go back now to the 1901 census mm -hmm. and, and we can find um, Stephen is marked down here, but Patrick is married now to Anne Keneally, okay? Mm -hmm. So now this, is, this would be your great-grandmother. And I know she died sometime between 1901 and 1911. And just, this, just today, I, I, this morning, I went along, and you can look up on irishgenealogy.ie, and I can see here her death record, um, and she died on the 1st, uh, 1st of January, uh, and she died at 43 years of age, and she died of asthma. And she has, it's written down here that. that she had four years and her, her husband is Pat Kennedy here, and he was present at the, uh, at the, at the time of death in Killeney. Okay, so kind of amazing sort of detail that oh you would you, you know then. at that point in time. The other thing, just to say to you, you can also look up, they got married, I, I forgot to mention this, they got married in 19, uh, 1933. You can look up the Royal Meteorological Society. Every year they come up with the, uh, the weather. Yeah. 1933 was a really good summer. Okay, so in many words, and, and also, <laughs> so the, the day that Stephen and Mary got married, yeah, my grandparents, yeah, yeah. that they, they it was a really good year, it was very sunny, Isn't I imagine, amazing? and it was a Tuesday. That's the other thing, oh, that's, you know, that's by the way, Jane. And um, just you just look up the Royal, the Royal, Royal Meteorological that's Society, oh, that that is such, you know, you think of it as kind of a simple thing, but that is such, yeah, you know, it, it, it well, colors it, it in life, in yeah, it does. Course, like, there's yeah. another part of the census which I find fascinating, and and one is that. This man, Patrick uh, Keneally, who would be your great-grandfather, okay, whose wife Anne uh, died, yeah. that you just mentioned, he was known, you told me this, he was known as the Duke. He was. He's the Duke. And one of the reasons, perhaps, that he was known as the Duke is because he, you told me this, that he had beautiful handwriting. Yeah. And that census form that you see is filled out in his own handwriting. Right, yeah. And it's really nice. And normally the enumerator, the RIC man, the constable that yeah. goes around doing it, he normally has better handwriting than anyone. But in this case, you can see the Duke he did. has better. He was apparently, but it's so funny. I was asking my mother the other day, and my uncle Pork, who's fabulous with this family history, really. That's my, my mother's younger brother. Uh, and Pork was uh, kind of, I'm going to my sister Barbara, who lives there, so it's all yeah. like around the kind of world. But saying that the day that he was born, Patrick, yes. a Duke visited the island. Right? So that's where he got the initial name of the Duke. And then it was so funny. He turned out to be this really smart, guy that was really good at writing and so which was different than yeah, that yeah, course, then yeah. lots of people couldn't write and read and he used to help people and he was a very good writer or reader and all that and then the duke was like that's it duke. perfect but, for him but i yeah, love yeah. i love that every because there would have been so many comedians i found there. a photo of him shane yeah. shane it's asked me wait this is that is the best photo look at that where's, where's see, see him there though hey where's, that's him there with right the hat on holding the little kid's hand ah. that's his son jimmy and and what, what, year was, what year was that taken this we think it's around 1912 yes. thereabouts and you can see i love it because when you look at that image, and I love, I teach my students how to analyze images, yeah. and you do, we, my plans for it, but I look at this in so many different ways. First of all, you see it's outside a pub. Okay. Yeah, that's cheap. It's, you probably yeah. know if you kill it, you can see Shane with and, Yeah, and, and, and Patrick Fitzpatrick is actually recorded as well. And that's as, his, Patrick, see the man in the doorway? Yes. That's yes. Uh, Penny Fitz, who owns it now, Penny Fitzpatrick. After. That's her grandfather in the door, Thomas, and her, her, her the father. Chair, the thing that gets me about this, okay? See the joke there? Yes. So you said that, that was around 1912 okay so that would have made the Jew he was born probably around the famine time yeah, you're right, yeah. so it, it just brings it's just That's a, right, a, a right, step yeah. close oh god to yeah. the famine That's as well right. yeah. and you know he was in the like? 60s there with that little yes that and, and what i love about that image as well is that you can see jimmy it looks to me like it could be a special occasion because he looks had a new suit of clothes he has no shoes it, it, he has no shoes but people didn't wear shoes and look at what the duke is wearing He's wearing the brogi or latter, the, the what they generally Pampoodi. call tampootis. Yeah. 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 So there, and and that's that's was what. And look at the torp home behind it as well. Then. You're right. Yeah. yeah. The, but then on either side of the donkey coming down from the steel. Oh yeah, yeah. cleave on. Yeah. And, yeah, cleave and on. you know that's that was it. That the the the, the, the key of like, so you yeah. all of that sort of detail going on. What I find interesting as well is that the household material that's there tells us what kind of house there was. So on the census, uh, in 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 his house, in in the duke's house. We can see how many rooms there are, how many windows there are, what kind of class of house it is. You can see there are three rooms and there are 11 people living I, in, I, I in that particular, else, yeah. ten, 10 people, I should say. Is living, that living house been there today, Maura? It's, well, it's down now, but it's, yeah. you know, the, the, the basic there, kind of But there was a whole group of them. There. And Beautiful thing. We lived there for a while when we were kids when we were building our house, you know. We did, we lived If there. we look at the ordnance map then at the time, you can see 
Killini itself was a clocken. It was this yeah. sort of group of houses together. Yeah. And there was a lot of fishermen gr growing out of that. And that's an old map there you found. It's absolutely fantastic. And that's from the first edition Orleans map. And really what I think about, so this is a fishing community. Normally houses are dispersed everywhere, but all the fisher fishermen, all the fisher people would have lived together in that little cluster. And that's what Killini is in, yeah. in that for critical image. Now, what happens is that we come along and you begin to observe, I looked up um, Stephen Keneally and I looked mm -hmm. up his death. Mm -hmm. And when I looked up his death, sadly what we saw was that uh, he had died by drowning. Mm, my grandfather, yeah. yeah. And then what happens is that you can go back to the Irish newspaper archive mm -hmm. online. Now that's usually, it's a, you have to pay to go on to that. Mm -hmm. But all our libraries, when, when COVID is over, people can go back into the libraries and you can access it there. And there was a very really sad account, uh, I have to say, uh, I was really taken by it, Maura. Yeah, I must of, read that because I haven't read that. Of, of, of the drowning that took place because he drowned and they went out in the Corrook, um, Stephen and uh, two, two others, the um, Thomas Joyce and his son Michael Joyce, and uh, their Corrook turned over and uh, they were putting out some new nets. And what happened then is that uh, there was a big search for them. They were found eventually by the, uh, the lifeboat um, down on, on rocks right below the cliff and it was totally inaccessible. And what happened was that um, they, the entire island, it says here in this in this amazing account, the entire island went out to rescue them. One young man called Thomas Thomas Powell, Thomas uh, Thomas Powell or Powell, Paul, uh, Paul, there, yeah. yeah, Thomas Powell got a number of, of he was a number of ropes was sent over the side down onto the platform below, took the rope. Each of the bodies were hauled on, oh and there's a harrowing account of them saying, bring them up, the silence that pervaded the island. They were rascals. It's weird it, for me to hear it, this. Yeah. It's incredible. So everyone, I think, when you begin to look, yeah. has a story. Yeah. And this is this is a sad story. What it's age was Stephen story. then? Um, he would have been 50, in his 50s. So she 50, was only in her 30s. Would, would you have heard part of 50, that story, Maura? I would, because I mean, my mother and Oprah yeah. left. Like the reality, they had, I think there were seven in the family, they were all left behind. And what age was her mom? Mom was under 10. Wow. And my uncle Porrick was a baby, I got so it. it was really tough. They had a tough, they had it very hard. Yeah. And she was left, and I know that my grandmother herself died in her forties of TB when my uncle was only in his teens too. So, so you, really... you, you, your mother wouldn't have had no. both parents got yeah, very young. Yeah, very young. Age. Incredible, and yeah. incredible to see all that. And you know, that's what happens. You start this thing off. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the stories come out and the history comes out. But everybody mm -hmm. has something like that yeah. in their family. Like any of us that can check. And I just think this is amazing, Shane. You're bringing it to us. You're bringing the Ordnance Survey. We're going to put all this on our Facebook yeah, page because, because yeah. people can do it themselves. There are two different avenues that can go down as well, Shane. Uh, there there are so many. get all this information. Listen, the, the other one I'd be hasting people to do is have a look as well at what we call the, the memoriam cards. Okay? Yeah. I brought in one or two here. Just My mother used to have a, a wad of these. She was like a someone dealing old cards in Las That's Vegas, true. you know, and she, she had oh, an elastic, there, Shane, we can see yeah, she had an a, elastic oh band God, around it. them, you know, oh, yeah. and she was say she'd often be saying her prayers and she'd be say, she'd have the, the card out for so on, you know, and I, I got these, but you normally have their date of birth, you have a picture of the person, yeah. you have the day they died. The, some amazing one here, just this one in particular, this would be my, my mother's uncle, okay, and the sad thing about, about him was that he died back in 1918 of the black flu of the oh, spanish yeah. flu the last pandemic and i kind of picked him out now because you know we think we're going through COVID yeah, now and so yeah. many people have had tragedies well go back you know what 100 years ago mm -hmm. there was another man who suffered at that time same time when, she, when did they start shed those, uh, those cows? i suppose they go back you're really associated with photography i have a number which go back into the uh, early uh, the late 19th century but the photographs kind of appear from kind of 1910 kind of onwards. Yeah. And that this, by the way, this is another relation of mine. I, I just, I have yeah. to bring out, this is the great Patrick Ryan. And another person of longevity, he lived 103. And Donnie, you mentioned the famine while ago. Yes. My mother remembers, he died in 1938. My mother was born in 1926. She used to sit on his knee and he used to tell her about the people starving during the famine period, exactly. you know? So Gee, that's what this is incredible. Yeah. Thank you so much. Dahi, now you're next. I'm next, yeah. yeah. We'll, go, we'll go for Dahi. He'll be complicated next, <laughs> then. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. His family might be lovely, though. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, I appreciate Thank it so you. much. You've done all the oh. digging for me. And I appreciate it for our viewers as well. Yeah, we totally do. Because yeah. they can do this and start that journey yeah. themselves. Yeah. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It goes, it goes straight in there, like, straight into the heart. Oh, my God. Like, And we all find out so much about ourselves. We put the list of the resources Shane mentioned on our Facebook page as well. RTE today and thank you so much and we'll see you very soon. Thanks, Thanks Jane. Jane. Now we're coming to Kilora.